In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a seamless, tileable texture that you can fill into a selection like this. Most of this video will be focused on how to create the pixel art in the actual pattern, but in short, we'll use the pencil tool to create the texture like this. Select the pattern, go to Edit, Define Pattern, name it, then you can create a selection with your polygonal lasso tool. Get the paint bucket from the top, choose pattern instead of foreground. And then you can choose your pattern from in there and fill it in as desired. To learn how to create this pixel by pixel, including the grass, then keep watching. First, go to file, new, and create an image that's 64 by 64 pixels. You of course can choose any pixel resolution you like, but follow this if you're quite new to Photoshop. Ignore the resolution, you've already specified that it's pixels, hit create. Zoom in without and scroll. For this tutorial, you'll need access to the grunge brush set linked to in the description below. Once you've downloaded it, you simply need to go to your downloads folder on your computer and double click on the ABR file. Photoshop will then come into frame like this, but you won't see any difference. If your brush didn't install properly, like you got an error, just go to the number beneath the circle at the top for your brush size and go to the gear cog at the top right and go to where it says import brushes, go to your downloads folder and then choose the brush from there and hit load. It should then work. To check that your brush is installed, go to your pencil or brush tool on the left with B at the top of your screen, go to the number beneath the circle for your brush size. And if you collapse down all of your folders with the arrow here, you should see one of your folders is called Grunge Brush Set by Sonic Gal. Hit the drop down arrow on there and you can see they have all been installed. We'll come back to those later. Next, let's set up our Photoshop workspace so that it works for pixel art. First of all, we will need to go to the brush tool on the left, which is B on the keyboard and change it over to the pencil tool. This will create brush strokes with hard edges. Next, go to your eraser tool, which is E on the keyboard and change the mode to pencil. Next, go to your magic wand tool on the side here and untick anti-alias, which gives again sharper edges. And while you're here, untick contiguous for later on in the tutorial. Same again with your polygonal lasso tool, uncheck anti-alias and on the paint bucket tool, uncheck anti-alias you're now ready to digital paint with pixel art. If I were you, color pick from another pixel art deck texture that someone else has done, so you get colors that you like. Otherwise, you can choose the colors that I will. For your, for your primary color, click on that at the top here and choose a shade of beige or brown like this, pretty much in the middle like that, hit OK. For the background color, click on that and let's sample the initial color that we chose and this time choose a darker and slightly less saturated tone. Hit OK. Let's go to our paint bucket tool on the left and make sure the mode is set to foreground and click on your background layer. Make sure that you just filled it with a darker color. I did this wrong by accident. Hit the swap arrow here or X on the keyboard to choose the darker fill color. And you wanna fill in your background with the darker of the two colors. While you're on the background layer, let's unlock it by clicking on the padlock tool. Now let's create a new layer for our rocks to go on. Now let's go and swap our colors back over here, which is X on the keyboard or that swap arrow. So your lighter color is on top. Now go to your pencil tool and we're gonna to need to change the brush. By default, you will be in the hard round brush, but this may be difficult to work with to create random rock looking shapes and it might look a little bit blobby. So if you go down to the grunge brush set which will be at the bottom of your brush list here hit the drop down arrow and let's just choose the top one where it says sampled brush one if you click on this you'll see the size goes up to 364 which is much bigger than our image and so it won't create the um, right effect let's scale our brush down by using the left square bracket or right click and make the size about 10 pixels for this at the moment, it's creating the same shape everywhere, whatever size we choose to have. To randomize this, simply go to the brush in a folder up here to bring up your brush settings. All you need to do is go to shape dynamics at the top and change the angle jitter to the max. That's all you'll need to do for now. If this is in the way, hit the fast forward arrows up here to make it go away. My brush size is about 15 
and then you can just go in and paint some random shapes as you do the rest you may need to just lower the scale when you're painting these rocks try to leave plenty of room around the edges to have other rocks overlapping i'm actually going to leave it like this and i'm going to repeat the texture first to see what i need to do if i was to fill in all the rocks right now neatly into this square you'll end up with a texture that looks something like this you can see that it repeats in squares really precisely and it's way too obvious so if you leave room around the edges and then make sure you have your top layer selected at the top of the screen go to filter other offset increase the offset value by 32 pixels which is half the size of this scene in both horizontal and vertical you can see your image will then move to the side and move up as well hit ok when you've done that and go back to your pencil tool continue to paint in more rocks and now you're painting over the seam of the original image which will help create the illusion of a seamless texture. Be careful here not to touch the edges, otherwise you may accidentally go through the other side. If you really want to, you might want to do Control R on the keyboard and drag down a ruler from the top. So if I wanted to add a small rock over here, I could just simply paint it in and try to make sure it touches the sides like this. And then over here, I know that I can continue that rock like this and you may need to make your brush very small to be super accurate when doing this step. And now this rock should be able to repeat over the screen like this. I'm just gonna randomize it a little bit more like that. And if you wanna make these rulers disappear, then you can get the move tool from the top and you can drag them up like this. If you can see your pixel grid, go to view, show, pixel grid, and this will turn the pixel grid off. That's view, show, pixel grid. Let's see how this looks the way it was originally. Go back to filter, other, offset. It's important that you don't click on the top one. It might mess things up for you. So just go to filter, other, offset. And you can of course choose a plus or minus 32 for this one because it's exactly halfway. But just in case I'm gonna do minus 32 just to help you guys if you've typed in a different number. In here, it always brings up the last number you typed in. My advice is just to put a, a minus before that number, whatever it was, and it goes back to the beginning. And you can see there are no seams left behind when you do this. If you do see any straight lines, now's the time to go in with your pencil tool and fill it in. Use the square brackets to make your brush bigger or smaller to add the details as needed. Now that we've got the overall shape for our rocks, let's add a little bit of texture to them. You can see in this one that I made earlier, the brick textures on here have some speckles on it to make it look like it's aged and dirty. Let's do the same here. To do that, go to the brush in a folder at the top for your brush settings and this time go down to where it says scattering. Increase the scatter amount to a thousand percent and make your brush size one or two pixels. At the moment, if I was to just make mine a crazy color to demonstrate this and I was to paint over my scene, you can see I'm able to paint everywhere, including over the gaps. If I hide this for a second and I go over to the area just above my layers where there's a chessboard and click on that, that creates an alpha lock for this layer, which means it will now only let me paint onto stuff that I've already painted for this layer, which is great. If you want to choose a darker color for this, you, you can now swap back to the background color for this step. And at the top, lower the opacity down to about 20-ish percent, and then just start painting over the tops of your rocks like this, and go over everywhere fairly evenly. Try to avoid anything that draws too much attention to itself, otherwise it won't repeat very well. You can scale your brush right the way up to make the most of the original grunge texture, if you like. Once you've done that, it's now time to create a 3D effect on this. If I show you the texture I made earlier, if I go into this brick texture here and start to erase from it, you can see that the highlights and shadows update in real time. So anything that's left facing up or to the left becomes bright. Anything on the right and lower down becomes darker automatically. To do this, simply double click on the thumbnail for your layer, the picture just here. This brings up your layer style window. In here, go to where it says bevel and emboss. Change your settings to be like this where the style is set to inner bevel, the technique is set to chisel soft, the depth is 1%, the direction is up, size and soften is zero. Set your angle to 125-ish degrees like this with the altitude set to 30 degrees. Set your highlight mode to screen and set the opacity of it to about 15%. For my highlight mode, by the default, it's a white color. Here I've used a yellow color with the 
color code D0D167, but you can just choose like a pale yellow lemony color like that. And for the shadow mode, it's multiply with the opacity set to about 60%. For this, I've chosen quite a vivid blue color. It's color 161684 down there. This just adds, makes the shadows look a bit cooler and the highlights look a bit warmer. Hit OK. Now let's go to our background layer and add some texture in that as well. This time go back to your pencil tool and we're now going to need to replace the darkest color in your color swatch to an even darker shade than that. I'm going to just choose a slightly darker shade to down here like that. That's slightly less saturated, so a bit further to the left. Hit OK. And I'm going to make my brush quite small just to create that sort of speckled dirt effect through here like this. So you can see the scatter brush here in action. And I'm on my bottom layer here, layer zero, like that. Now we're almost done, but there's an issue where at the edges of our image, you can see that there's highlights and shadows like this. And if I was to go to filter on this top layer, filter, other, offset, notice how that the sides of the image are always having this beveled effect on them wherever the texture goes. This is because we've created a live effect for this layer and we now need to get rid of the live effect. If we leave it as it is, it will create a issue like this, where when you go to fill in your texture, you'll notice that the edges of your texture have this sort of beveled effect on them like that. So we're gonna need to go and hide that. To do that, we're gonna need to rasterize the effects on this layer here. So at the moment, obviously, this is a live effect. And if I was to turn off my alpha mask and erase it, you can see the shadows and highlights update in real time here as well. But once you right click on the layer and do rasterize layer style, now when I erase from it, it doesn't update in real time. It's no longer a live effect. It's been baked into that image. Now, if I go to filter, other, offset and type in the values of 32 and 32, you're gonna see this large cross in the middle. And this is a mistake I forgot to correct just now. So to get rid of this cross in the middle, you're gonna to need to hit cancel so that it goes back to the way it was before you just hit offset, but after you've rasterized it. Now we're gonna to need to get the crop tool, which is C on the keyboard. Usually the moment you click on this, a crop box comes up around the edge of your document. If it doesn't, click in the middle of your canvas and then a crop box controls will come up around the edge. All you need to do is go to the top and make sure you tick the box that says delete cropped pixels and then hit the tick at the top or enter on the keyboard. There may have been some artifacting here that was caused by rasterizing this layer. I'm not sure what it was, but now when you go to filter, other, offset, it's corrected the gap issue. And now we just need to correct our bevel issue here. So we can hit OK with the values of 32 or minus 32 for both and go back to your pencil tool. Now I'm going to hold Alt to sample the color here, the main color of the rock and make sure my opacity is set to 100%. I am now going to need to go back to my brush here and just go and maybe choose a regular hard round brush for this one and click away. I have more control on a pixel level to do what I need to here. I'm just going to kind of scribble over where the bevel is. You may notice that you are painting in a perfectly block color here. So feel free to hold alt, sample a different color and just randomize some speckles over there like that to fix the issue. So I'm holding alt to sample whatever color I feel like replacing it with so that it's not obvious. Once you've painted over the groove lines that were left behind, you're now ready to set this as a pattern. To set it as a pattern, it doesn't matter how many layers you have, but you can go to edit, define pattern and name it. I usually put in the number at the end of the size of the image, which is 64 pixels and hit OK. You can now go and test this in a much larger image. So if I do file, new and choose an image that is 600 wide by 400 tall and hit create and go to my paint bucket tool by default the paint bucket tool will of course fill a color if you can't see the paint bucket tool on the left just click and hold and go to the paint bucket tool that's hitting g on the keyboard for the paint bucket tool i'm just going to fill this in with a blue color for the sky like this but if you change the paint bucket tools mode from foreground to pattern and then hit the drop down arrow here you should see the pattern that you've just made. If you hover over it, it will show you its name. So that's obviously worked. Let's create a shape for it to go in. Otherwise, it will just fill up the whole screen. To do that, go to your polygonal lasso tool, which is L on the keyboard, and go down to and click and hold and choose the polygonal lasso tool. 
You can then do a dot to dot like this to create the shape of the terrain that you need. And then when you get to the right hand side, just go right around the bottom like this and just click and join back up to where you began. If you hit the backspace button on the keyboard, it will undo the last click you made if you made a mistake. If it's all gone completely wrong, hit escape and try again. When you get back to where you started, you can double click to finish the selection up. Now go back to your paint bucket tool and make sure the pattern is still set to the pattern and your rocky texture. Fill it in and you can see it's worked perfectly. You can then deselect it with control D. Now let's add some grass to the top of it. Go back to the image and go back to your crop tool. Drag the crop tool from the top up like this to create some room for the grass. As much room as you think you need. When you're done uncropping it, hit the tick at the top. Let's create a new layer for the grass. Choose a shade of green that's quite gray and in the middle like this so just to the left of the middle will be a decent shade where the grass isn't too luminous make sure you are still on your new layer and go back to your pencil tool let's go down and choose our, one of our grungy shapes for this i'm going to choose sampled brush one and i'm just going to go back to the brush in a folder and make sure that the shape dynamics are set to a hundred percent for angle jitter then you can use the left grab bracket to scale a brush right the way down and you can just kind of paint something like this over the top. I'm going to use my rulers here so that I know roughly where to have the pixels joining up on the sides like this. And you can just paint some grass sort of drooping down like this. And if you make a mistake, you've got your eraser tool and you can go ahead and like trim things off if you want with the eraser tool by hitting E on the keyboard. Again, try not to draw any features that draw too much attention to themselves so that it repeats well. Once you've created the overall shape, I'm gonna hide my guides by going to my move tool, dragging them up to the top here. And I'm going to want to fill this grass texture with something a bit more grungy. To do that, I'll go back to my pencil tool. And this time I'm gonna go down to where it says color dynamics. And I'm going to make sure that everything is set to zero. So the foreground, jitter to zero, hue jitter to zero, saturation jitter to zero, brightness jitter to about 10% and the purity leave it in the middle at zero. But when you paint now, you'll see that your grass is like this, but I only want to paint inside the shapes that I've already drawn. So go back to the alpha lock button, which looks like a chessboard for your grass layer. A padlock will appear. You can then just scribble in whatever you want for the grass. The bigger your brush, the more leaf like it will look, um, but the smaller the brush, you'll end up with completely random pixels all the way through. So you can just sort of scribble over that like this. Now let's add a slight drop shadow to the grass at the top here. To do that, you can double click on the image for the grass, the thumbnail for it, and go down to where it says drop shadow. For your drop shadow settings, set the blend mode to multiply, the opacity to only 15%. The angle should be recognized from the rest of the lighting in the scene, 127 degrees for me. Make sure the distance is one, spread zero, size zero, and that should work quite well. Make sure the anti-aliased is unticked for this. If you increase the opacity of the shadow too much, it may get difficult to use later on when we apply the pattern. And, and make sure if you use a color for your shadows, it's quite a dull or pale gray shade of blue like that. If you want to, you can go to bevel and emboss at the top and you can leave the bevel and emboss options from before if you like, which was inner bevel, chisel soft, one zero zero, make sure the lighting matches, which it should do. And I've left my highlight mode as it was before with the exact same colors I used before. This should remember it all from the previous thing. Hit okay. If you wanna see what your effects look like before and after, you can hit the eyeball over here for your effects and you can just see if you prefer it with the 3D effect on like that, which I do. I'm now going to right click and rasterize the layer style for that and just scribble over what I know is the little beveled edge on the side over here so that the cut, there's no grooves in the grass pattern later on. Let's set the grass as its own pattern. To do that, you can turn off all, both of your other layers like this so that you can see a pixel grid behind it that, dem that shows it's transparent. Then go to edit, define pattern and call this one grass 64 and then go back to your wide image and make a very wide box. It's as wide as your whole image. So go to your selection tool over here, the rectangular marquee, drag a wide selection like this and make it very tall, much taller than you'll need the grass to be. You'll see why in a second. 
and then make a new layer for it to go on. I should have done it before as well. I then go to your paint bucket tool. This time, change the pattern from the drop down arrow to the grass that you just made and fill it in. Here you can see the grass has repeated a couple of times. If the selection box was too small and narrow like this, you may have an issue where the grass gets chopped off at the bottom like that. So that's why I always make the selection box bigger than I need to. I can then go back to my rectangular marquee tool, drag a selection box over one of these bands of grass or more and hit the backspace or delete button on the keyboard to make it go away. Go back to your move tool at the top, which is V on the keyboard and lower it down to the ground. So it's roughly in the right place. I'm going to go to extract this piece of grass on the right to go over there before I bend this grass to match. To extract something from a layer, go back to your rectangular selection tool select what you'd like to extract and on the keyboard do control x and then control v for violin and it will paste that in move this now over to the top and you can see that's on its own layer let's go back to the bottom grass layer here and let's make sure that it can bend to match the slope of the ground here i'm actually going to extend this hill just to make it clearer what i'm doing notice that when i add to my selection by going back to my marquee tool and making an extra selection the grid lines up perfectly and the texture is still seamless even in this new selection that i've added it's, it's great so on the bottom grass layer, make sure that nothing is selected and do control D on the keyboard and then go to edit puppet warp. And you're gonna to need to put in some dots. I start off with one on each extreme side of the shape like this. And then I'm gonna create one in the bottom of this groove here, one at the peak of this hill, one where I've started to change direction in my selection tool and then it goes flat there. Let's move these down. So I'm going to move this one down first. You have to be very careful and click on the dot. Otherwise you get this scary message coming up saying that you've cannot add a new pin or something like that. So you have to be very careful and click on one that's already there. If you make a new one by mistake, do control Z to undo and you can drag these down. The only disadvantage of doing what I'm doing now is that you lose some of the sharpness of the grass, which we may be able to bring back in a minute, but it won't be quite as sharp as it was before. But there's another way of editing the grass, which I can show you in a second. When you're done, hit the enter button on the keyboard and notice that it does get a little bit sharper when you hit enter like this, and that's good. If you want it to be sharper still, you can go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, and just increase the amount ever so slightly to bring that back to however sharp it was at the beginning. And you can do something similar for up here. The other way to change the angle of an image without it getting as blurry as with the puppet tool is to simply hold control on the keyboard and with the mouse over the middle side control toggle here, you can actually warp the shape up or down. This is good for having slopes. And check at the top that the interpolation is set to nearest neighbor. This means it will retain its pixelated effect throughout the transformation process. So I can kind of create an angle like that and pretend my hill was a bit steeper than it is. And when I'm done, I can hit enter or the tick box at the top and I can just go in and fill in some more rock texture under here if I like, like so. And that's how you can create a seamless, tileable texture for your games or images like this and how to warp images to match. If you're going to be exporting this into a game engine, then the whole paint bucket thing isn't going to be super useful. It was only really good for Photoshop. If you're going to be exporting your terrain blocks into a game engine, then I'd recommend doing the following. Go back to your original block that you made and do file, save as, save it as a PNG file and name this one terrain block grass. The PNG will give you the transparency and a much better compression method than the JPEG for pixel art. Hit OK. And then to go back to the original size, simply hold control on the keyboard and select the thumbnail for the background layer. This will then bring up a square of the shape of the background layer. Now, when you hit C for crop, it will, it will automatically know that you want to crop to that shape. You must untick delete cropped pixels, otherwise you might lose your grass. Then on hit enter to commit to the crop and enter again. You've now cropped your image. Don't worry though, the grass is still at the top because you unticked delete crop pixels. And now you can save this image as the original block shape file, save as PNG. And you're gonna call this one terrain block hole like that. And then if you wanted to create a slope for um, your terrain to create a range of terrain to use, then you will need to do this. Get your polygonal lasso tool and very carefully click in 
the top left corner like this. If you hold shift on the keyboard now, you'll notice it creates a perfectly diagonal line down to the bottom corner for you like that. Then go around the top like this and double click to finish a triangular selection. Go to your layer zero at the bottom and you're gonna to want to now merge these two layers together. It might be a good time to save this as a Photoshop file. I'm gonna do file, save as, I'm gonna call it terrain because I'm about to lose some layers and I can always come back to here if I make a mistake. So I'm gonna hold shift and select both of these layers, right click, merge layers, it's just off screen here, sorry. And then you can do control X, which will cut that out from there. And if you do control V, it will paste. If when you hit control V, it moved a bit, you can do control shift V. What we've just done here is take it away from the bottom layer, but put it back on its own layer just in case we need it. I'm now going to poke the new layer in the eye. So we're left with this shape here. Now let's have a look at our grass. Turn the grass layer back on. Most angled surfaces in games like this are gonna be on the surface of the terrain and therefore should have grass on them. So if you go to your grass layer, hold the control or command button if you're on a Mac and drag the side angle down like this. And before you hit the tick at the top, just make sure that you have set the interpolation to nearest neighbor. Now I'm gonna be careful and make sure that my grass is exactly in the corner like this and at the top. So if this is one pixel up there, I need to make sure my top corner is set to be like this where it's one pixel down. So my one corner needs to be a pixel down like this, and one corner needs to be a pixel up. That means it will look good when tiled up against itself. I'm now going to hit enter on the keyboard, and you may want to erase from this piece of grass here just so that it doesn't carry through into the image below as much. You can now save this as you choose, file, save as, terrain, pixel art, slope, right. Make sure you save it as a PNG, I forgot there. That should be everything you need to know to create an entire tile set out of pixel art, but you'll have to create all of the images like this, including the cliff edge pieces, middle sections, and underground pieces as well. And once you've got something like this, you could easily go onto somewhere like the Unity Asset Store and sell it, or go ahead and put it into your 2D platformer game. I hope that helped.